Today we're going to talk about constant rate of change and slope. By the end of class, students should be able to graph proportional relationships, interpreting the unit rate as a slope of the graph. So unit rate means that it's to one unit. So rate of change is when you have the rate that describes how one quantity changes in relation to another. So you can talk about um, how many miles you drove or something, so to speak, as like miles per hour. They want to know how fast are you driving for one hour. A linear relationship is the rate of change between two quantities is the same or constant. This is called constant rate of change. Constant, remember, means it doesn't change. Okay, so this doesn't change. So when you've got a constant is something that's like a consistent thing in your life. Coming to school is a consistent thing. It is every day. So example one, the table shows the difference traveled on a zip line tour. Find the constant rate of change between the quantities. So find the rate of change that do, it doesn't change. It is going to be the same. So if we look here, we've got our time and our distance. The distance is going to change as the time changes. So they're going to put your change in distance over your change in time. So we've got the time goes from 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, 8 to 10, and 10 to 12. So we can see that it increases by 2 each time. Now our distance goes from 12 to 24, 24 to 36, 36 to 48, 48 to 60, and 60 to 72. So we add 12 each time. So now in our chart, we're going to put our 12 feet over six over two feet. Now, if you over here, you can go ahead and put 12 feet over two seconds. And you want to simplify this. So you can either divide, because we know a fraction bar means divide, or you can simplify it the old way of just simplifying fractions. So then you're going to end up with 6 over 1. So it's going to travel 6 feet in 1 second. Okay, when they're talking about a unit rate, Remember, unit rate wants it to be for one second. So whatever your unit is, so whether it's seconds, minutes, hours, it wants it to be in one. <clears throat> so now we're going to go here, and let's look at our try a few together. We first want to count. Let's put our days over money or money over days. Let's do money over days. So we're going to go ahead and we've got $100 for one day. Okay. And then we're going to, we can see here that we go from you add one day, add one day, add one day. Now here, the money decreases. So it's going to be a decrease, which means you are subtracting. So 100 to 80 means you're going to subtract 20. 80 to 60, you're going to subtract 20. Let's go back and fix that here. Minus 20, minus 20, and minus 20. So what you're going to do here is that they want to know how much money Did you make in a day? In one day. So we can see here that you made $100 in one day. But as the days progressed, you actually lost $20. So we can go ahead and put minus 20. OK. 
okay? Or if we wanted to write it in words as $20 lost each day. Okay, the whole point of constant rate of change is that you want to set it up as a fraction so that way you can get it as simple as possible. Okay, and the same thing here is go ahead and say how much did you increase or decrease by for each number. Okay, so this is minus 40, minus 40, minus 40, and plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So as the time increases, your altitude decreases. Go ahead and make sure you do the U try. Now we're talking about constant rate of change on a graph. Okay, you've seen coordinate graphs like this before. Now we're really focusing on two major points. So it says a circular design on the internet advertisement has two circles. So you can imagine that one circle would be here and one circle would be here. We can even go ahead and draw those. There's one, there's two. That's a little bit more of an oval. There we go. Okay, there are two circles. So one that is decreasing in size, so a smaller one, and one that is increasing in size, so it is getting bigger. Find the constant rate of change of the radius of the circle, one, in the graph. So what they're asking you, this is circle one, which is green here. Okay, this one's circle one. And this is circle two. Okay, so they're saying that they want to know the rate of change of the radius of circle one. So choose any points on the green line. I like to go ahead and focus on ones that are very easy to decide. I wouldn't want to choose something like this because it's at a halfway point and that makes it really difficult because then you have to deal with decimals or fractions. So let's pick points that are directly on an X and a Y axis. That will always help us. So go ahead and write yourself a little note to pick points that meet directly at the X and Y axis. Okay, it will just make our lives a lot easier. So now we're gonna talk about the change in radius. So the change in size compared to the change in time. So this is talking about if you notice, we've got time. Okay, so our time is our x-axis and our radius or our length is our y-axis. So they graph it out here for you. You wanna pick your points. Really any points on the green line will work, but like I said, pick points that are on the x and the y. Then you're just going to subtract them and then simplify, which means divide. The fraction bar means divide. Really what they're asking you to do is just divide and get one as your denominator. That's about it. Now the only difference truly between here and here is this one they're giving you a graph and figures and this one they're just giving you tables and numbers. So if we go through here, okay, slope is what you remember as um, it used to be rise over run. Okay, when you were first introduced to slope, you may have seen rise over run. Now that we're a little bit more advanced, we're gonna move on to a formula. Okay, rise over run really equals this formula, which is your slope formula of y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. Now it says here x2 and x1 can't be the same because if they're the same, then it's gonna get you a zero on the bottom. So for example, if we had um, a two minus two on the bottom and you had a zero, we know by your divisibility rules of zero that that's not possible. So what we would like to do First thing is let's use the graph to find the coordinates of circle two, interpret its meaning. So let's go ahead and find these two points. We've got the point of two, three, and four, six. So the first thing that I do is I go through and I label x1, y y2 x1 x2 y2 y1 so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our y's first i normally just go in order let's do y1 y2 and let's go with x1 x2 so now what i want to go ahead and do is take my y2 which is six and actually, I'm going to go ahead and write my formula out because the more that I write the formula, the more I'm going to remember it and I won't need to go back to my notes and look. So now we're going to have 6 minus 3 over 4 minus 2. So we can then go ahead and simplify these down. 6 minus 3 is 3 and 4 minus 2 is 2. So our rate of change, or our slope, which slope also is represented as m. So I would write that somewhere slope equals m. Instead of writing the word slope every time, you're going to see m as a replacement. So we've got 3 over 2. Okay, We can leave it like this if we truly want, because then this tells us our rise. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Okay. Rise over run. 1, 2. Oh, I counted wrong. Let's go back there. We've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. There we go. Now you can check and make sure that when you use your rise over run, you are getting to the same Point. Now you can make this as simple as it can, but this is pretty much it unless you went to 1.5, which you don't want a decimal. So make sure you keep slope as a fraction. Okay, what I would like you to do is Look through here, see how these are something that you're going to need to memorize, um, which is the positive, the negative, and the zero. So positive is always going towards the right. Okay, I like to think of when you're thinking of an increase, it's going up, right? So your arrow is going up and to the right. A decrease is going down. So this one's pointing down, which means we can kind of infer that the graph is negative. And when there's no change or zero, it is just a horizontal line. Okay, now yet again down here we have our equation to tell us the difference between a graph of a slope. So let's go ahead and work on these together. The ratio of a vertical change to the horizontal change of a line, which is the definition of slope. You want to find the change. It describes the steepness of the line. In linear functions, the slope or rate of change of the line is always constant, which means it doesn't change. Okay, It does not change. You can't go up by two and over by one, and then the next time go up by three and over by two. It's just not how it works. The steeper slopes present a greater rate of change. The less steep presents a lesser rate of change. So 
find the slope. We know that our formula, let's write it again. We know that m equals slope, so we're going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I don't need to write x2 can't equal x1 every time, but I definitely would recommend writing your formula every time. Like I said, the more you write it, the better you will remember it, and the easier this will become. So first thing you need to do is identify your points. So we've got our y's are in blue. So I'm going to go ahead and use blue, make it easy on myself. My y points are, let's label this one as y2, and this one will be y1. So we're going to do 6 minus 3, and we're going to say that since this was x, y2, this has to be x2. They have to match their ordered pair. So this is y1. This must be x1. This cannot be x2. This is your 1s. These are your 2s. They have to stay the same. So now we're going to go 8 minus 4. So we will have 3 over 4 as our slope. Or... 3 over 4 equals m. They are the same thing. Now, to make sure we're correct, let's try it out. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. The reason you need to know this formula is because you will not always have a graph in order to use your rise over run method. So you need to remember your formula. Okay. Continue on with the notes and try did few on your own. These right here are going to be the same exact thing, except you don't have a graph. So still go through and label x1, x2, y1, y2. Okay, so then you're going to have your 2 minus 3 because we know our equation is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we'll have our 1 minus negative 4. Remember to put your negatives in parentheses.